Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to earnings conference call of Dalmia Bharat Limited for the quarter ended 31st December 2023. Please note that this conference call will be for 60 minutes and for the duration of this conference call, all participants line will be in the listen only mode. This conference call is being recorded and the transcript may be put up on the website of the company. After the management discussion, there is an opportunity for you to ask questions. Should anyone need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Before I hand over the conference to the management, I would like to remind you that certain statements made during the course of this call may not be based on historical information or facts and may be forward-looking statements. These statements are based on expectations and projections and may involve a number of risks and uncertainties such that the actual outcome may differ materially from those suggested by such statements. On the call we have with us Mr. Puneet Dalmia, Managing Director and CEO Dalmia Bharat and Dalmia Cement Bharat Limited, Mr. Dharminder Tuteja, Chief Financial Officer, Dalmia Bharat Limited, Mr. Rajiv Bansal, President and Chief Transformation Officer, and other management of the company. I would now like to hand the conference call over to Ms. Aditi Mittal, Head Investor Relations. Thank you, and over to you, ma'am. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to quarter end three earnings call of Dalmia Bharat Limited. We announced our results yesterday and the presentation and the results have all been uploaded on our website and can be downloaded from there. I will now hand over the call to Mr. Dalmia for his opening remarks. Thank you, Aditi. Good morning, everyone. Last week, I was at Bharat Mandapam with our entire Dalmia leadership team and I was brimming with pride to be standing in that iconic structure which probably is one of the finest in the world. I can confidently say to all of you that India around us is changing. And you will agree that our government has played a defining role to shape a development agenda and ensure that we soon become the world's third largest economy by 27-28. Our country has undergone a huge metamorphosis with a lot of reforms in the last decade. Steps whether in form of banking reforms, GST, IBC, or direct benefit transfer, have given a rock-solid foundation to India and the much-desired immunity from adverse global economic events. And the beauty is that the impact of most of these reforms is irreversible in nature. All these reforms have placed India on the world map and attracted substantial international investors and investments. The base for sustainable growth has been set. The momentum is clearly built and we are now transitioning from a reform phase to a fast growth phase. The world looks up to India not only for its political significance but also for the large economic benefits where India can make a significant contribution to world growth. With, growing, with growth slowing down the world over, India's demographic dividend will help us shine for not only this decade, but many, many decades to come. The government's continuous thrust on infrastructure has led to the turnaround in the real estate sector, and the private capex has started to kick in. Recently, there are some reports that the government may taper the infrastructure budget allocations to control fiscal deficits. However, I personally believe that infra development and job creation will remain two key focus areas for the next seven to eight years. And foreseeing this massive growth opportunity, we remain committed to our plan of 110 to 130 million tons by 2031. With general elections around the corner, there could be some temporarily, temporary cyclicality, but the long term looks very, very promising. Cement as a sector will be direct beneficiary of the India growth story. 
and cement demand should continue to grow higher than the GDP growth rate. Within the sector, the barriers to entry have gone up and economy of scale is beginning to play a big role. Large companies with robust supply chains and strong brand presence will continue to gain market share and the pace of consolidation will increase further. We were the first ones to reinitiate the conversation around consolidation. And if you look at the last 10 years, the demand share of top four companies has increased from about 46% in financial year 13 to almost 57% in financial year 23. Going forward, with large capacity announcements by the top four companies, the pace of consolidation which could be much faster. This is indeed one of the best times for our sector. And increasing consolidation will potentially lead to a more stable pricing scenario in the sector. While the pricing could be volatile for a few quarters, I believe prices will grow 1.5 to 2% CAGR on an average over the long term, as we have seen over the last two decades. As a company, growth for me is not simply adding capacity, but also building an organization which rests on the four pillars of scalability, sustainability, predictability, and consistency. As I look forward, my emphasis will be on building deep organizational capabilities to deliver on each of these four pillars. As I was mentioning, we continue to work firmly on our vision of building a pan-India pure play cement company of 110 to 130 million tons by 2031 with an interim milestone of 75 million tons by financial year 27. While we would take an additional quarter to announce the details of the 75 million ton plan, we are on track to deliver our first milestone of 49 million tons by March 24. We will complete 46.6 million tons by March and we are working on closing the proposed GP acquisition within this quarter. While Dharminder will elaborate on our financial performance, I wanted to share certain highlights. I am pleased to share that we have grown faster in our core markets after two quarters of subdued performance. We will build further on this momentum. We continue to learn, expand our reach, and invest time and money to deepen the relationship with our distributors and our institutional customers. While this is a continuous journey, this gives me the confidence that next year we should grow in line with our aspirations and deliver a mid-teens volume growth. During quarter three, we achieved the 8.1% YOY volume growth and delivered a volume of 6.8 million tons. Our revenues also improved in line with the volume growth. There was a marginal price improvement in both East and South, which led to a 4% price increase sequentially. However, during the quarter end, we have noticed some weakness in the prices and the exit prices are closer to the September quarter exit prices. On the cost side, stabilization of commodity prices has given some headway in margin recovery. From almost a 27.5% EBITDA margin in Q1 of financial year 22, we hit a low of 12.8% in Q2 of financial year 23. And we are now back to 21.5% in Q3 of FY24. It has been a very volatile journey over the last two and a half years. But that has made us more cautious about identifying and investing in levers of long-term cost sustainability and predictability. The average fuel purchase price hovered around $115 to $125 per ton during the quarter, with spot also at about similar levels. The EBITDA per ton was 1138 rupees per ton in Q3 of FY24, which has risen from the low of 
656 rupees per ton in Q2 of FY23. Next year, we believe that the EBITDA per ton for the sector could be in the range of 1100 to 1200 rupees per ton unless there is some unforeseen eventuality. I would now like to hand over the call to Dharmendra for an update on the financial performance. We will answer your questions as Dharmendra will open the fifth floor for Q&A after that. Thank, Thank you, Puneeji. Good morning, everyone. Let me take you through the details of our financial numbers. During the quarter, our sales numbers increased 8% YOY to 6.8 million tons, and during nine months, by 9% YOY to 20 million tons. This includes JP plants volume of about 0.4 million tons in Q3 and 0.9 million tons in nine months FY24. Our revenues during the quarter increased by 7.3% YOY to rupees 3,600 crores and in nine months by 7.7% YOY to rupees 10,373 crores. The trade sales during the quarter improved to 63% from 60% in the same quarter last year. On the low carbon cement, we remain committed to enhance our resource efficiency and reduce our carbon footprint further. During the quarter, our blended cement was 84%, which is marginally lower than the previous quarter, but we are working to increase it in line with our long-term commitment to become 100% low-carbon cement producer over the next three years. On the cost side, we continue to be one of the lowest cement cost producers. Our total cost during the quarter declined to rupees 4,147 per ton. Breaking in, into each head, our raw material cost remained flattish at Rs. 781 per ton of cement production. However, since this line item also includes purchase of stock in trade goods under tolling, the increase in the financials appears much higher at Rs. 939 per ton. Power and fuel uh, cost declined 23% YOY to Rs. 1,102 per ton of cement production, mainly due to the $53 per ton decline in the fuel consumption cost on a YOY basis. With this, our blended fuel cost during the quarter stands at about Rs. 1.50 per million K calorie. As Suniji mentioned, fuel costs have now largely stabilized. We may only expect marginal reduction of around 3% in fuel consumption cost in Q4 FY24. Our renewable power consumption marginally dipped to 25% from 29% in the last quarter due to an unplanned stoppage at WHRS facility at one of our plants. However, it has been resumed since then. We expect our RE percentage to now be back to the normal levels in Q4. The freight cost declined by 2% YOY to Rs. 1,091 per ton, with reduction in lead distance to 283 km YOY. On the fixed cost side, employee costs have increased by Rs. 28 crores, to Rs. 221 crores, primarily due to annual increments and increase in number of headcounts due to addition of new capacities at different locations. Other expenses have also increased by Rs. 27 crores on a YOI basis, mainly due to higher shutdowns with addition of capacities in this quarter compared to the last year's same period. Overall, our EBITDA during the quarter improved by 11% YOI to Rs. 1,138 per ton, which is the highest in the last nine quarters. Regarding incentives, we have accrued Rs. 69 crores of incentive during the quarter. The collection during the quarter has been Rs. 153 crores. For nine month period, the total accrual stands at Rs. 217 crores and collections at Rs. 216 crores, almost similar. The average receivable as on 31st December stands at Rs. 718 crores. For FY24, we expect the total incentive accruals to be around Rs. 280 to 300 crores. Moving on the balance sheet items, depreciation during the quarter has increased by Rs. 45 crores on a YOI basis. Of this total increase, Rs. 9 crore pertains to certain components of plant and equipment which are being replaced as part of our overall debuffing projects. 
This was a one-off charge which we had shared with you earlier in our call. Coming on to the expansion, our cement developing project of 0.9 million ton in Belgaum has been commissioned during the quarter. Our expansions at Karappa and Arelu for 1 million ton each are also progressing well and will be completed by March 24. With these expansions, our cement capacity in south will reach 17 million ton and total capacity of 46.6 million tons by end of this fiscal. This excludes 9.4 million tons capacity coming from JP. Regarding our other expansions beyond FI24, we have ongoing work for 0.5 million tons in Kalyanpur and 2.4 million tons in Lanka, northeast, which are subject to be commissioned in second half of FI25. Capital expenditure spent during nine months of the current year was rupees 2,132 crores. Our total capex spend during the year, FI24, excluding the JP plants, is estimated around rupees 2,000 crores. This includes expansion projects in Northeast and Bihar. The cash outflow for JP plants is expected around rupees 3,300 crores whenever it gets consummated in the next few months. During the quarter, we have received the final tranche of rupees. 120 crores from the divestment of the post store business to promoters. With respect to refractory assets, we had all, already received 160 crores in April this year. The next installment of 320 crores is also received during the current quarter. The balance 320 crores will be received in September 24. Since we had a cash inflow of 340 crores, we have repaid some of our short-term debts during the quarter. The closing gross debt now stands at 4,928 crores. Our treasury balance has also increased by 704 crores, primarily with the MTM gain booked for our holding in IEX by Rs. 476 crores. As a result, the net debt of the company has decreased by Rs. 1,069 crores to Rs. 431 crores in this quarter. Net debt to EBITDA multiple materially improved to 0.16 times as on 31st December. We believe that even after the acquisition of JP plants, our net debt to beta will remain comfortably below our target of two times. With this, now I open the floor for question and answer. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Participants, you may press star and 1 to ask the question. The first question is from the line of Amit Muraka from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi. Uh, good morning. Thanks for the opportunity. So uh, the first question is around uh, the capacity utilization and your expansion plan. So, uh, like based on current volume, it seems to be at 60% utilization uh, with expanding capacity, and um, I, I believe we are still sticking Amen. to the. Sorry to interrupt you. Can you please speak a little louder? Uh, yeah, hi, sorry. Yeah, I, I, I hope this is better. Thank so you. I was asking that uh, the capacity utilization seems to be like under 60%, and uh, the expansions are quite steep from here, and there's expectation of 75 million ton as well by FI27. So. Uh, what's the plan like to take the utilizations up like because the implied volume growth will actually be upwards of 15 percent if if uh, the current expansion plan needs to come through so amit uh, rajiv here uh, amit uh, as puneet said in his opening remark you know we had uh, slightly softness in our volume growth in the first two quarters but now with a lot of initiatives that have been taken during the quarter we have seen good growth this quarter and building on the momentum uh, I think we feel pretty confident that we'll be able to deliver a mid-teens growth uh, in volumes next year. And uh, that is in line with our long-term thinking in terms of, you know, the volume growth should be in mid-teens. So, you know, there would be always, you know, when you look at it, seven, ten-year plans or expansions and the India story and how this sector will play out. I think it's important to keep this uh, in, uh, you know, this goal in, uh, in place and probably tweak a little bit here and there as we go along, right? So we had put an intermediate milestone of 75 million tons by FI27, and uh, we also have put a guardrail of two times needed to a bit for ourselves. 
and given that we saw a slight weakness in the volumes, we have delayed by a quarter. So we are back to drawing boards. We are looking at you know how we are seeing the next few years initiatives playing out. But you know, having said that, I think our long-term story is intact. We continue to believe in the sector, in the momentum that has been created, the beneficiaries of the sector of of, of all the India growth and infrastructure growth is going to be cement. So long-term vision and and strategy remains intact. There could be a few tweaks here and there as we go along. But uh, I believe that meeting growth for the top players is, is going to happen. Uh, got it. But uh, I just wanted to understand, like, that uh, uh, in this whole process, when you go about capacity mapping, like, uh, uh, what comes first? Like, is a capacity goal coming first, or is it, like, the current volume and market share that you're carrying uh, is based on which you'll derive the capacity expansion plans? Like, how how are you going about it? So it's a mixture of both. You know, see, so far the first milestone of 48, 49 million ton was mostly in our existing locations, right? So there they were saying we don't want to, we want to gain on the market share. There's competition happening, the competition expansion plan. So we wanted to, you know, uh, increase our footprint there and also ensure that we we have a good market share there. The next set of growth is going to come in new regions, as Puneet also said that you know we are, have a we have a fan India vision. So as we look at expanding in newer regions, you know, any volume that we get is going to be incremental for us. So, you know, from that extent, I think it's a mixture of both. Uh, you know, we believe in the India story. We believe in the 15 percent casual volume, uh, the capacity growth. We believe to, we want to be 100 to 130 million tons uh, player by, uh, by 2031. At the same time, we are taking a lot of initiatives. We are talking about, you know, how dealer networks are being built, how the dealer initiatives are being done how we are looking at a branding and everything. So we believe that volume will catch up. You know, last year we grew at 16% volume. Our revenue growth was 20% in line with what we had digested for. And this year the volumes are slightly lower in the revenues, but, you know, next year we should catch up. So I think there could always be blitz in this journey because, you know, it's very difficult to predict uh, quarter on quarter, you know, near market by market. But I think we are not seeing anything in, in our macro scenario, in our market that makes us believe that this is not doable. Right. And lastly, like, uh, what will be the interplay between uh, volume and uh, pricing when you go about that 15% plus volume growth uh, expectation? See, as, as Puneet was also saying, you know, you see, when you looked at the data for the last 10 years, 20 years, see, prices are always volatile quarter on quarter, right? Uh, there's seasonality, there's a uh, geo mix, and, they, and there's a competition mix, and new capital is coming out. There are many, many factors which impact the prices for the quarter. But if I look at the long-term 10 to 15-year pricing, it has always gone up between 1.5 to 2%. You know, some years goes up at 3.5%, some years goes up, goes up by 0.6%. But on an average, 1.5%, 2% pricing is we get. So I think when we are modeling for the future for the next 7, 8 years, we are factoring in about 1.5 to 2% pricing fees, right? So I think the pricing and volume, I think we are assuming it's 1.5 to 2% pricing fees, and then we are assuming a mid-teens volume growth, which we need to deliver. And again, it may differ by region to region, but again, uh, we want to go at mid teens for uh, volume for the next seven, eight years. Sure, I'll come back in the queue. Thanks. Thank you. I request to all the participants, please restrict to two questions per participant, and please join the queue again for a follow-up question. Next question is from the line of Rajesh Ravi from HDFC Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Good morning uh, to the team. And so, first question pertains to what, what is the cleanup production in Q3 and nine months? And second, could you elaborate on the JPA deal and what was the volume from the JP in this quarter? Uh, Ravi, uh, uh, the clinker production we don't share separately, and the JP uh, volume, as I mentioned in my opening remarks, in this quarter was about uh, 0.4 million. So what is the status on the deal, uh, you know, completion? Uh, could you show some, uh, you know, what is the progress? Yeah, as it is linked to certain approvals by third parties, so it is taking longer than uh, what we had expected initially. So we expect to complete this in the next couple of months only. Okay, so this five first round you're expecting to be completed uh, by March, right? We are trying our best, yes. Okay, and so what is the thought process on uh, business expansion in the central market? What sort of deal and network we have been able to execute so far? That is progressing well. So that is the result that the volumes have been progressing uh, every quarter higher. 
and we expect that in the coming quarter this will progress much further mm -hmm. okay and uh, full year any volume growth guidance which you would want to look at 10 to 11% for full year is that a reasonable number sir Uh, for the next year, Puneet has already mentioned that it will be around uh, um, uh, mid-teens, and uh, current yes. year, three quarter you already seen, and we are on a recovery path. So, in line with the industry, we should be improving. Okay, and some housekeeping numbers: trade, non-trade, and blended cement uh, production share. If you could uh, share, please. The trade, as I mentioned, is 68% uh, in this quarter. 63%, sorry. And the blended percentage was 84 percent. And and premium cement sales. Sorry, premium cement in trade sales. Percentage of premium cements. Premium premium is 21 percent this quarter. And sir, I missed this per KKL number fuel cost. If you could repeat that, please. Yeah, 1.50. 1.50. And now this is almost the bottom. It was you looking at, right? Yeah, I'll see. Uh, prices are stabilized and marginal softening is there, so we may expect two, three percent drop in the coming quarter. Okay. Great, sir. I'll come back. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Indrajit from CLSA India. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, thank you for the opportunity. I have a couple of questions. First, uh, going back to your volume growth expectation of mid-teens, what kind of industry growth are you penciling in for expecting mid-teens growth for us? The reason I ask is most of the consolidation in the sector is now done. The I mean, I don't see uh, capacity is being added by the same five, six players, so unlikely to increase further. So what is the kind of market share gain you are penciling in? No, so uh, Indrajit Rajiv here. If you look at what we have been saying, that GDP will grow about six and a half, seven percent. We expect cement sector to grow about 1.3 times GDP over the next five, seven years, which would mean the cement sector would grow about eight, eight and a half percent. If you look at the data of the last five, seven years, as uh, Puneet and Damendra were saying in the opening remark, uh, you know, almost 100 percent of the incremental demand has been coming to the top four, five years, right? So if you factor in a cement sector growing about eight and a half percent. And this is sort of an excel spreadsheet in terms of the whole eight and a half percent coming to the top four or five players. That means the top four or five players will grow about 13, 14 percent year on year, right on an average. Within that, given that we have more headroom to grow, we are getting a newer market. You know, we are, our utilization is one of the lowest in the industry, as you know, just some one of you guys has pointed out. Uh, we believe that given our initiatives that we are taking into, you know, many things that we are doing in terms of organization building, in terms of market research, in terms of dealer networks, in terms of new market development, we believe we should go about 15 to 16 percent. That's the reason we believe that we will grow in the mid teens. So mid teen is more like a medium term number, not like an FY25 guidance as such. Is that correct? No, 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 no. It's a, it's a. See, what we are saying is that we believe that given all the stuff we are seeing, we should. Grow between 15 to 16 percent year on year. That's what we have been saying for the last uh, two years now. Last year we did grow 15 percent volume. Uh, revenue was about 20 percent. This year it has been slightly subdued. Uh, we still have this quarter, and we are, we are hopeful that this quarter will do exceedingly well. But you know we'll have to wait for how the numbers play out. But again, the idea is that on an average we should grow 15 to 16 percent year on year for the next three four years. Sure, that's helpful. Second question, actually coming back to this quarter, right? If I strip out JPA tolling volumes, our volume growth is close to two to three uh, percent. Do you think it is in line with industry, or we would have lost market share again in this quarter? I think we would have gained market share in most of our markets. Indrajit, when you look at that like two to two to three percent volume growth, excluding JPA tolling. You know, given that we are predominantly in east and uh, south and east market, this quarter has been uh, very soft. We believe we have gained market share, uh, especially in east. And JPA tolling profitability will be significantly lower than our regular uh, core business profitability. Is that correct? That is true. It is too small, right? At a 400k volume, we are still in the investment phase, right? We are still developing the internet, so we are still investing in the brands, etc. So, of course, you know, anything that you do new for the first 18, 24 months, it's an investment phase, and the margins will be just a little lower than the average. Also, just to add to what Rajiv is saying, this is Puneet. Uh, we still don't have full control of the manufacturing operations, so the cost structure of these plants is also quite high. And I think to bring them to the Dalmia cost structure, 
it can be done only once really we complete the acquisition. So we are uh, working with a high cost, uh, you know, uh, facility, but it is helping us, uh, you know, uh, establish ourselves in the market ahead of the team. Sure, no, that is understandable. One last housekeeping question: I missed the CapEx guidance for this year and next year. Yeah, this year, uh, other than JP, we expect uh, the capex to be about 3,000 crores. The JP cash outflow, we expect around 3,300 crores. And next year, guidance is around 3 to 3,500 crores. This includes any incremental capex in JP, or it is just on the organic current business? It includes JP also. Okay, thanks. This is helpful. That's all from my side. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Rashi Chopra from Citigroup. Please go ahead. Thank you. Just uh, take one of the question on the uh, volume growth. So you, you, know, you mentioned that you gain market share uh, in the East, given the softness we saw in the Eastern market. So um, I understand that we're working on a strategy to kind of recover what was lost in the next uh, in the last two quarters. But uh, you also mentioned that in the fourth quarter you're expecting to grow in line with the industry. So, I mean, how do I lead into this? Is this because of the elections or, you know, how do one, how does one think of at least the fourth quarter? So, we are trying to uh, uh, gain market share in quarter four also, but uh, just to be conservative, we said that at least it should be in line with the industry or slightly better. Okay. I mean, in your estimates for India as a whole, what was the demand growth in the third quarter as well as in the nine months? Rashi, you will have better numbers than we will have here. You will talk to all the companies and all the people in the industry. So I think that's a question which I wanted to ask you when I meet you next time. But uh, honestly, we believe that this year, you know, whatever we believe, uh, industry will probably grow about uh, eight and a half, nine percent odd. Um, it's different region by region. Very difficult to put those numbers right now. We we'll see the full everybody announcing the numbers. But I think industry as a whole should grow about eight and a half, nine percent. Okay, thanks. Uh, on the uh, on your uh, capex, you know the next year capex is about three thousand to uh, thirty five hundred crores. So, what is the pending capex that is remaining till until this first phase of expansion gets completed? As in, until you get to forty nine and a half million dollars, what is pending till then? Okay. There are two expansions ongoing, which is one in the northeast uh, and second is in Bihar, Rotas, point five million. So, these two are included in this. No, I just wanted the amount actually. The, the individually for each of them. What is pending? That breaks the pile. We will to share separately. Uh, the overall the capex for these two plants was 3750 uh, uh, crores, and uh, roughly about uh, 90 percent, 80 to 90 percent still to be spent. And what do you uh, count, count as maintenance capex within this 3000 to 3500? Yeah, maintenance capex is close to about 250 crores or so. Okay. Uh, one last question. Just on the cost side, uh, did you mention that costs should decline by 2-3% in the next quarter or power and fuel should decline? And sorry, I didn't get that. The fuel. The fuel cost should soften by about 2-3%. And power cost also will go down as we increase our RE power percentage back to the normal level of 29-30%. So some amount of the weakness in pricing should get offset by this uh, cost improvement in the next quarter. That's true. Okay. Thank you. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is on the line of Shravan Shah from Dollar Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, sir, the first question is, uh, 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 as you mentioned, that uh, in the next quarter, whenever we announce the uh, uh, next expansion, to reach a 75 MTPA, will this include the expansion to the north uh, so that we become a pan India player, or uh, that will be uh, in, the, in the next uh, post? That we have to wait till we make the announcement. Oh, no, no. Okay, we still be as Sunit said in his opening remark. You know, we are still working on it. We are still on the drawing board. You know, there's a final digits we finalize. But again, the, you know, definitely things that we said is part of a strategy and vision. We want to have a pan India player. We want to have a pure plan pan India player. And we want to have a significant presence in every market that we operate. We don't want to spread ourselves too thin in every market just because we want to have a pan India player. 
And it's not that we'll achieve a planning in the next one year or two years. You know, we have a six years, you know, by 2031 is when we said we'll achieve. So you have to wait and see. But, you know, we'd like to go region by region, market by market, get significant market share in each market, and then go deeper into uh, the country. So, you know, we'll have to just wait and see how hard it is. Okay. And next, uh, again, coming back to the volume growth. So when we say 15, 16% volume growth, so let's assume uh, uh, we, we will be able to uh, complete uh, GP uh, uh, by March. So for, for next year, uh, next FI25, how much uh, volume one can, can look at from uh, GP? We don't give the regional numbers for separately. So collectively, you can expect around 15, 16% growth. Uh, okay, and and when we say the next year uh, industry beta per ton would be 1100, 1200 odd rupees, uh, or considering one and a half two percent uh, price uh, uh, increase. Uh, so in terms of for us, uh, will it be a, a, a kind of a 10 percent kind of a higher profitability uh, for us? You can consider the same numbers, uh, reason being that uh, we'll be also stabilizing and ramping up BJP operations. So currently we'd like to be around the same numbers. Okay. And a uh, uh, couple of data points. First is uh, CC ratio for this quarter, uh, railroad mix for uh, this quarter. Uh, and and uh, is there any, any any scope in terms of further reduction in lead distance, uh, though uh, it has increased by 600-odd kilometer QOQ? So CC ratio in this quarter was 1.66, and lead distances, I expect, uh, may not fall much for, uh, and should be around similar levels. Okay. Uh, uh, railroad mix and the fuel mix for this quarter? 86% is the uh, road, and 14% is rail, and fuel mix is 54% petrol. 54%. And uh, coal would be how much? Hello. Uh, sir, coal and uh, uh, green share for this quarter was how much? The green power we mentioned is about 25%. Okay, okay. Thank you and all the rest. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Vivesh Agarwal from IIFL Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity, sir. Uh, sir, firstly, uh, could you explain the sequential increase in the freight costs that we saw in the quarter? That is primarily due to the busy season surcharge which got in, uh, levied in the third quarter, which was not there in two months in the previous quarter. Okay. If, uh, because the number, the increase that I see is 6.5% on a QOQ basis, while our rail mix is only 15%. So that additional 15% uh, is... Yeah, marginally, marginally there's also increase in the uh, lead distance and uh, some increase in the L2 movements also would be there. Okay, okay. And uh, secondly, sir, you did mention in your opening remarks that prices have been weak and have uh, again fallen back to the September and exit prices. In fact, uh, our channel check suggests prices have further declined in Jan. And with limited uh, opportunity in terms of cost optimization for the fourth quarter, are we expecting uh, EBITDA per ton to decline in the fourth quarter versus 3Q? We do not expect because partly it will get corrected by the cost uh, offsets. And secondly, of course, industry will be trying for, for correcting the prices back. So we hope that uh, whatever drops may have happened in January you know, should come back. You know, Rajiv here, it's very difficult to give you number what the uh, EBITDA per ton. That's the reason if you look at our funding style in the opening remark. We expect the EBITDA per ton from here on to stay between 1100 to 1100 rupees, right? But quarter on quarter is very volatile. On an average, we get 1.52% price increase. But if you look at on quarter on quarter basis, the prices are volatile. So very difficult to give a number on a quarter to quarter basis in this industry. All right, sir. Sorry, sir. One, one final question. Our CC ratio for the quarter is at 1.66. Uh, incrementally, is there any targeted ratio that you have, uh, given that we will be pouring into other regions where blended cement is not uh, as much uh, a proportion of the overall volume? So is there any thought process around what would be the targeted CC ratio and any plans to add more clinker compared to what we are adding on the cement side? Uh, 
again, you know, let us see when you ask a question about lead descent, we should think the leading indicators of how we would like the business to grow. But, you know, these are not the decision making points. We have to go at a certain volume, we have to get a certain market share, we have to command a certain price, we have to look at what the demand environment is. And then we have to optimize our KPIs and all the leading indicators and see how best we can deliver to the customer what is required to be delivered, right? So it's very, again, as I said, you know, do you, as the vendor said, we aspire to have 100% blended cement. Right? Today we are about 86 or percent. Right? So definitely the situation will improve. But if you ask me, will it happen in the next quarter? It all depends on the demand environment, region by region, the, the product mix which is getting sold. First objective is to ensure that we get leading volume growth, right? Industry leading volume growth. We deliver it in the least possible cost. We are customer centric. We deliver the customer what is required, the best quality product. And then we have to optimize many of the things, right? So I think what you have to look at is that said, we plan our uh, future and we plan our numbers and we plan our delivery uh, models. We focus on these things first. And then everything else is how we try to optimize the test. So it's very difficult to put those as a leading thing and then plan numbers. Right? Understood. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Jashandeep Singh from Namora. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Uh, thank you for the opportunity and congratulations on a great set of numbers. Uh, my first question is regarding, you know, demand and the performance in both South and East region in third quarter. So how uh, did you see the, you know, the region South and East perform in the third quarter? And we saw some moderation in demand in the second half of third quarter. So, uh, you know, have you seen any recovery uh, in both the regions in the first 25 days of January? My first question is this. So this Puneet here, I think uh, on the price side, as I told you, we see, uh, you know, more weakness only in, in January. And um, I think on the on the demand side, uh, you know, the first uh, 18 days, first 15, 17 days is Pongal in South. And, uh, you know, the demand usually recover, recovers after that. So I think it's just been a week after that and we will know a little bit better, uh, you know, in the coming days. But uh, usually this quarter is a better quarter from a seasonality perspective. And uh, this quarter volumes are likely to be higher than the December quarter. So I think uh, on the pricing side, uh, you know, we think that there is weakness. Uh, you know, uh, maybe it will recover a little bit from here. But uh, it's hard to predict prices quarter on quarter in this industry. Sure, sir. Thank you. My, my question was mainly uh, in terms of volumes only. Uh, my second question is, sir, on, uh, you know, raw material costs, especially slag and fly ash costs. So why, oh, why, how much, uh, you know, escalation or increase have you seen, in, especially in slag costs? Because I'm seeing that most of your power and fuel cost benefit has been offset by, you know, other raw material costs. So just wanted to understand, you know, how much slag cost, uh, cost and fly ash costs have increased on a why, oh, why basis. In the earning release, you had mentioned the overall uh, total raw material cost. Uh, I think the breakup beyond that would like, like, uh, not like to share. So the overall nine months, it, there's a drop of about 3%, and uh, quarter on quarter, it's uh, almost uh, flattish. Okay, sir. I'm not sure. And so my last question is regarding the green power mix. So in FY25, I believe you will be adding around 120 uh, megawatt of green power capacity. So can you please give a breakup of how much will be WHRS and how much will be solar and wind? And what will be your green power mix uh, by the end of FY25? So majority of that will be solar, and we expect, uh, I think, the air that to be close to uh, upwards of 35%. Thank you so much, sir. I'll get back into it. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Satyadeep Jain from Ambit Capital. Please go ahead. Hi. Uh, thank you. Uh, first question on um, on market share. Um, obviously, we've seen some market share erosion in the past few quarters. Uh, you're mentioning um, a strategy to gain market share and taking some initiatives. A, can you elaborate on what kind of initiatives uh, or change in course of action you've taken so far or, or planning? Is it um, maybe change, change in some mix, maybe tar targeting more non-trade also, change in incentive structure? And also tied to that would be the JP acquisition. It's been a few quarters of tooling, um, not not meaningful bump up in volumes there. 
has have there been any surprises on either side uh, now that you've seen this asset and what is um, stopping from from increase in tolling volumes till we complete the deal those that's the first one on on overall volumes uh this is puneet here i think uh, you know the initiatives that we are taking in terms of uh, expanding our volume is that one we are expanding our reach we are recruiting new dealers uh we are also investing time and money in deepening the relationship with our existing dealers and also our institutional customers so we are also looking at how we can uh, you know invest more in demand generation and uh, you know you will see more of this in the coming quarters uh as regard jp i think as i said that uh, the plant needs more investments uh, there has not been any material surprises so far uh, but i think uh, we are it's operating at a high cost right now and uh, that high cost structure uh, prevents us from expanding our reach beyond a certain uh, you know certain markets so uh, we are unable, and also it's running at low utilization right now uh because initially in the earlier you know few quarters uh, there was a lot of transition related issues where the dealers needed confidence uh, to work with the company and um, i think uh, now slowly we are you know uh, ramping it up uh, we have also made investments in uh, it's a new region for us so we've also made investments in uh, uh, more brand awareness and all these things take time so we have inherited a high cost structure plant as of now and we don't have full control over um, over the assets so uh, that's why there is there is some limitation on, and constraints under which we are working and um, you know but the good good part is that uh, we have spent this one year learning a lot about the market uh, learning a lot more about the plant and we have a full plan ready so that we can hit the ground running uh, as soon as the acquisition happens and uh, bring it to the dalnya uh, boss structure the acquisition uh, completion to me uh, is largely the approval from lender that is uh, taking time uh, yes, yes uh, absolutely it's a it's a lender approval process and uh, you know i think uh, we are quite confident that we should consummate the deal this quarter okay. just one more question on um, the capacity expansion obviously you reiterating 75 million tons by 27 um are you is the company fairly ahead in the planning process because 27 means you need to start looking at maybe ordering in the next few months so can we uh, have these sites been identified and can we expect ordering uh, for this expansion in the next few months and another one i think that would be there is a peer who is talking about expansion in northeast um by setting up a subsidiary could that be a risk um for comparative intensity in, in northeast I think uh, you know we feel that there will be continuous expansion in this business because uh, just like us everybody sees the India opportunity and um, you know I feel that uh, you know to remain uh, competitive in this industry we have to uh, a have a low cost structure uh, on which we've done a lot of work and we'll continue to deepen that journey and I think uh, secondly we have to you know invest in market facing a uh, function like sales distribution and also you know delivery time and brand so my personal view is that you know uh, in the long term the entry barriers in this business are rising and um, you know i feel that uh, there will be periods of high competitive intensity but uh, you know we feel that consolidation is inevitable in this business and eventually this business will you know definitely offer volume growth um and we are modeling a you know low uh, low pricing growth um but uh, you know if consolidation reaches a certain level there could be upside in terms of prices over the next 7 to 10 years 5 to 10 years i don't know how to how to predict it but i think we are we are not taking a you know short term view uh, on this business we have benefited from taking a long term view and we will continue to be consistent in in our investment strategy by looking at this business in the long term can we expect equipment ordering in the next 6 months for the next leg of expansion yes we are we are doing we are doing very detailed planning side by side so um, you know you will see you will see um, you know very clear announcement with very clear timelines uh, from us thank you for your time thank you for your time
along with, uh, in addition, you know, prior JP, we have already announced roughly about 59 odd million tons already, right? So this is incremental 16 million tons is what we're talking about. Uh, to a large extent, the planning is done. You know, there's just some final details to be done, but to a large extent, planning is done. I think we're just delaying the announcement by a quarter because, you know, this year the volumes have been slightly muted. We're just waiting for a lot of initiatives taken. We're also seeing this quarter how performance coming. See, once we commit to the things, then if we are allocating capital and we're committing to spending that capital. So we just wanted to see for one more quarter and also look at the GP acquisition getting consumed into this quarter and then probably be able to be more confident in terms of rolling out those central minimum plans. So, you know, it's just a delay of one quarter because we also want to just check a few things before we roll it out. Okay. Thank you so much and wish you all the best. Thank you. A request to all the participants, please take two two questions per participant. Next question is from Ryan of Ritesha from Investec. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Thanks for the opportunity, sir. Uh, I have three questions. Uh, sir, first is on the industry side, you indicated uh, price growth of, say, around 2%, uh, cost inflation of 1.5, and uh, EBITDA in the range of 1,200. Uh, would it be possible for you to give a sense on uh, what is the threshold ROC that you look at at the industry level? Uh, the reason to ask this is basically we are looking at both uh, attractive volume growth as well as pretty decent profitability. So uh, what is the ROE estimate that we are looking at, or are we calling that the profit pool will shift from mid-small cap to the larger top four, top five names? So gradually, <clears throat> you can expect that all leading players, they should be able to earn about 15% return on capital employed. But of course, this will be on a mix of the old assets as well as the new assets. And new assets uh, normally take a couple of years before they start earning 15% ROC. But uh, on a blended basis, uh, you can expect that uh, the leading players uh, should be able to return a return on capital employed of 15%. Uh, I would presume this is post-tax and excluding incentives? Incentives are included, but yes, uh, it will be post-tax. Okay, uh, this is helpful. Uh, sir, my second question is on, uh, I think, the next phase of expansion. I was just looking at the uh, limestone option. I think something has done phenomenally well to augment uh, reserves upwards of $1.3 uh, However, if I look at the average premium, also it's upwards of 50%. Uh, so for the next phase of expansion, uh, how should we look at the incremental uh, capex intensity, uh, which I presume would be largely greenfield, uh, and the cost curve for the next phase of expansion versus the current assets? Uh, are we looking at a steeper increase, so more of opex inflation as well as uh, on a capex side? So on the capex side, uh, I think that you can expect uh, uh, average cost of the capacity is close to about uh, 70 to 80 dollar per ton basis. Will be blended because there'll be a couple of uh, brownfield opportunities also and uh, greenfield also. And if uh, any acquisition happens, it could be in the range of 80 to 100 dollar per ton. And of course, on the opex side. Uh, uh, fuel remains uh, uh, uncontrolled uh, element, but as more and more. Um, coal mines are being uh, auctioned, industry will have uh, more control on their key cost structures. Oh, sir, I was referring to limestone. Limestone auctions, of course, it will be two auctions only, and uh, marginal increases you can expect uh, going forward. Okay, uh, thank you. And just a last question, sir. Uh, how do we see flash slab inflation? And uh, Dalma has been up on the curve when it comes to ESG. So are we looking at a launch of Delphine Clay LC3 anytime soon? I think most of the mills have indicated that they are already ready with it. Uh, so is this also something which is there when you say within three years, 100% blended cement? Uh, the 100% blended cement is one of the stated objectives. And of course, the specific uh, details of uh, product elements, that of course we will not be able to share right now. Thank you. A uh, request to all the participants, please restrict to one question per participant. The next question is from the line of Prati from Jeffries India. Please go ahead. Yeah, good morning, sir. My question is on JPA volume. So when you say 15% volume growth, uh, so you are expecting how much for the JPA volumes uh, in FI25? And uh, do we expect the cash outflow related to JPA in FI24 or FI25? So we do not share the region-specific volume separately. 
And as we said that it is expected uh, in the next couple of months, we are targeting that it is closed uh, within March. So if it happens within March, our cash outflow will also happen in March. But it could be one month here or there. So Pratik Rajiv here, uh, I think our JPA volumes, you know, why we've been sharing the JPA volumes to this quarter is because we started rolling from Q4 of last year. And it is only right to share the JPA volumes separately so that you get a sense of how we are doing in our, uh, you know, core markets. But having said that, I think once we already completed four quarters of sharing JPA volumes, there is no reason because nobody gives numbers separately in terms of, you know, how much you're doing by each asset. So I think, see, JP will become part of our core assets, right? And uh, then giving those segmentation will become difficult. I think only targeting a mid-team growth, we are factoring in all the assets that we'll have, including GPA, which will become an integral part of our, uh, of, you know, asset base. And uh, on the, the next question, on the, on the cash flow part, I think we are hoping to close this by March end, right? But, you know, by the time it gets closed and then bridges has to be done, to a large extent, the cash outflow will only hit probably a month, a month and a half after the consummation to a large extent after the final. Sure, I'll get back to the queue. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the land of Pratik Maheshwari from HSBC. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Sir, my, again, my question was on the JPA. So, sir, when you are, uh, as, as the deal is close to completion, I, I wanted to understand, sir, uh, would at 9, nine million tons of uh, grinding, would you, uh, would you guys face problems and completely utilizing the asset because probably uh, probably so far the clinker is available at this 4 million ton. And also looking at from the perspective that the markets that you're entering are probably more PPC uh, oriented. So obviously the uh, clinker to cement ratio will come down. That's my that's my first question. Another question is also wanted to kind of just uh, squeeze in. Uh, what could be the, uh, the JP plans? JP plans. So when we come acquire, let's say, 9.4 million, definitely uh, some clinker will be short. But of course, the ramp up of these plants may take time. So till that time, we'll have uh, whatever required clinker is there, that will be available with us. And there will be opportunities for expansion, both for the clinker as well as the cement capacity in the central region, within the same assets. Within the same, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Navin Sadeo from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, just one question on the renewable power front. So in the nine months, there has been a very small, just about nine or 10, uh, like, you know, 11 megawatts sort of an addition in the uh, solar power front, whereas bulk of it is then obviously left to Q4. Uh, so my question is, is there a reason uh, uh, why the progress is slow? And in the same breath then, the target next year, which you answered in the previous question, that bulk of the addition uh, 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 for the target in uh, to FI20 of 328 megawatt of total renewable power, bulk of uh, it will be solar. So will that also be back-ended? Thank you. See, uh, the technology on the RE front uh, has been evolving and uh, of uh, late, less than recent months, the uh, solar panel prices have reduced significantly, which translates to a lower cost of uh, uh, RE power. So had we contracted these uh, power contracts, let's say, uh, six months before, we would have lost the opportunity of contracting much lower rates, which we are able to do now currently. So you can expect that, uh, of course, bulk of this is... Uh, may come, let's say, around the mid of the year or maybe just the third quarter of the coming year. Um, but subsequent announcements now will be much faster. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, due to paucity of time, we'll take that as a last question. I will now hand the conference over to Mr. Pandit Dalmia for closing comments. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I appreciate all of you taking interest in us and uh, you know sharing uh, feedback with us uh, on this call and off the call uh, I, this is our first call in 2024 so i take this opportunity to wish you and your families a very happy and prosperous 2024 
and look forward to connecting with you again in the next conference. Thank you. Thank you very much. On behalf of Dalmia Bharat Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us. You may now disconnect your lines.